the budget. Now, every year, actually, uh, the finance minister stands up there in the parliament and delivers the budget. I would say that the kind of hype that has been created on our budget over the last five to ten years actually almost precedes anything that really happens with the budget. And I think that's part of what we should debate today overall. And I think the onerous uh, level at which we put it with the ministry sometimes is much more a media event than a finance event. And I think that's something we will also discuss today as far as that is concerned. We're going to cover a lot of interesting topics, and therefore we're going to go at a really rapid pace. And uh, let me first start off by introducing our very august uh, panel. I have with us Dr. Saxena, who's the Vice Chan Chancellor of uh, NMIMS University, Ashank Desai from the Mastec Group, Mr. Venugopal Dut from the Videocon Group, Ashwini Kakkar from Mercury Travels, Shefali Goradia from the BMR and Associates, and Mr. Katau from uh, Varun Shipping. So I think we're going to start off the entire uh, discussion with, I think, the first point that I kind of mildly raised in my introduction, which is that the government's got an unprecedented mandate. I think the market has almost future factored all the good news that can possibly be there. There's a high level of expectation, but I think it's pretty much clear that for all mature people, the budget does have a predictable sense of what is going to come about it. So do we actually now start making such a big event? We make great demands. We go one-on-ones with people, industries go out there and give their wish list. But at the end of the day, we all know what the agenda of the finance ministry is. And I think to that extent, Mr. Dude, maybe we can start with you as to what you think. Is this more of a media event now than actually what it delivers? Always not necessarily a media event. This time it is a very serious budget because you see, we want a growth of 7%. And nowhere in the world this growth is there. In USA there is a minus growth, in all G7 countries there is a minus growth. And we want growth. We have already controlled inflation. Now, finance ministers should not wait for some invisible hand to come and help him. He has got a visible hand and that visible hand he has to spend. He should not bother now about what is the fiscal deficit and all, all this fiscal prudence has gone. Fiscal Responsibility Act, where they have said that they will go uh, fiscal deficit up to 2% of the GDP. Not necessary. You get, go up to 6%, 7%, spend. Spend this money which goes uh, to the people who are living at the bottom of the pyramid. And if they have money, the power of poverty eradication work will be done automatically and they will spend. And once they spend, they will get the tax, government will get the taxes. We'll come back yeah. to the issue, I think, on, on, on debt accumulation. Yeah. I think that's a valid point yeah. you've right. raised in yeah. terms of the free hand. Yeah. Ashant, your views on... I, I agree with you. Really speaking, I think we should not have budget uh, hype that we need to have as we move along. Uh, but I think it doesn't happen, unfortunately. My real uh, vision is that maybe you should have budget once in five years, so that you have five-year plan, taxation, everything taken care of so that less work for all of us. Uh, but seriously speaking, I think we need that direction. So from that perspective, I'm saying annual event should not get that much importance. However, having said that, what happens is there are certain things happen every time. And this time around, it is important because it's a new government. And as they say, that first three years are important because they can be a bit bolder. After that, they, you know, have all you other issues come up the next and so on. So maybe this is a good time to talk. And uh, I am very hopeful that we'll have some lively debate. Okay, Ashwin, let me, let me just take that on to you, just as first opening comments on that. Well, you know, the first thing I want to say is that a budget has really, in the larger sense, become irrelevant in the context of uh, whatever happens in India. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at a new mandate for a new government, I think this is a great opportunity for the government to declare its key priorities. Uh, to give us a broad sense of direction for the next 10 to 15 years. The 1991 budget has been reverberating till today because uh, it's uh, allowed us this 7, 8, 9 percent growth. And, uh, and that is what that budget was responsible for and that's why it's always called a landmark budget. And that's the opportunity that the government has this time to create another landmark budget which will be talked about for the next 10 to 15 years. But I guess the key question is, can that be a landmark event in one time? But we'll just come around to that. Shefali, what are your sort of opening views? Well, I find that India is uh, definitely in a unique position. While most countries are doing firefighting, 
we are in a position where we have the time and opportunity to propel India into the next phase of reforms. So we should take that opportunity. And you think the budget is the right platform for that? Or? Well, I don't think budget is the right platform, but uh, if, I mean, it can't really go too wrong. So I don't expect much from this budget. And I feel that any policy level change that has to happen will take some more time. But definitely it is a, it is a point of time some, where, where the government can start off with something. Dr. So, Saxena, from your side, education, reforms, anything else, or the budget itself? Well, I believe that uh, education really needs a lot of kind of a, uh, attention today. And this is just a time when the government of India can really pay that kind of an attention. It has got all the kind of mandate that it needs for, for making a change. Very interestingly, if you take a look at it uh, for the last, I mean, uh, last year we just spent just about 1.2% of the GDP for the, in education sector. Now, we are really looking at uh, making the Indian economy grow at about 8% and 9%. You've got to invest in the education sector. Because if you don't, then in that case, you have a serious crisis of the quality of manpower that we are really talking about it. So I see budgetary exercise as something by which not only what Mr. Kakar said just now of uh, the government really putting out the priorities, I think it is also important for us to really uh, enter into a dialogue with the government. And I think it is over here that the media can really play a very significant role. Where the private sector can actually push that? Yes. Okay, and I think education is definitely an important point we're all going to discuss here. Uh, Mr. Kadav, your opening views on the budget and event? Well, uh, I, think, uh, I, I think I agree, which is that uh, the budget's not really the day when everything is supposed to happen. It's supposed to be a continuing process. The challenge that we have with our government is that you don't have a single answer coming from one section of the government. When you are asking for a policy, um, you talk to uh, the shipping ministry and they refer matters to the Ministry of Finance. Uh, they talk to the Economic Affairs, the Commerce Ministry. The budget is the one day when you get an answer to a list of pending questions. Yeah. You know, you have a situation where they have an opportunity to, on that particular day, either say yes or you know, effectively say no. So I think, year. yes, I think the important point of the budget is really to get a common answer for, uh, a, you know, a year-long process of questioning. Mr. Kala, I'm going to start with you with an issue, go, but I think it's governance. The, I, I genuinely believe, and I want to challenge it specifically for an audience here, that at the end of the day, does the government really finally have the accountability to the voter? They go out there, they articulate it, but there isn't a report card. How is it that actually young India actually can make a difference on the, what I would call, accountability factor for what we're about to enter into? We've got a five-year mandate for a government, which is fantastic. How are you going to bring about accountability to the government, whether it comes to fiscal measures or other measures? What's your sense? Well, I think uh, this is one time when the government has absolutely no alibis. See, they have a clear mandate. They, have, uh, they, have, they, are in the, they are in the limelight. Not only they are in the spotlight, not only as far as India is concerned, they are in the global spotlight. Because today, whenever you talk uh, in any international forum, it is China and India. The global environment is looking at China and India as the drivers of growth. They are looking at us actually uh, acting as a catalyst, if not in terms of quantum, then definitely in terms of sentiment in changing this recessionary environment that the global economy is facing. Uh, I think that is going to put a lot of pressure on the government. So, but how, how, how do we actually go about and hold them accountable? I mean, as much as there is a budget, should there be a process by which every six months we have an actually have a, have a review in that thought process? Is that something that could be inducted? And I, and I think this audience and Young India can actually make that difference. I'd like to throw that open to a few people here in terms of, specifically on terms of governance. Uh, well, uh, go ahead, we can hear you. Uh, when it comes to uh, accountability of the government, the biggest factor that is hindering us from, in fact, developing such an accountability standard is because somewhere down the line, growth seems to have hijacked development. We today look at 10%, 12%, but is that what it is? Don't you think it transcends that? It goes beyond that? I think somewhere down the line, we have forgotten what development is, and it's high time we start looking at things more holistically, and development should be our goal and not mere growth. And, and you segregate development and growth because what's, what according to you is the key differentiator? The key Isn't development is, a byproduct of growth? It's just, it's just not playing with numbers. It's looking at living standards. Has that, as he had pointed out, distribution So essentially I think your point is, is it translating itself down exactly. to, to the, does to it, the does it standard really of living? Exactly. Does it really benefit us? Okay, if fine. Today we're talking so that's about a relevant point and we'll come back to that and, and leave that with the panel. Anything else specifically on governance that anyone would like to speak about? 
Think, Sorry, just a sec. On, yeah, go ahead. On this issue of governance, uh, governance, I think it is something that the that India uh, as as a country should ask for is is a report card. I mean, we in every industry today uh, have a report card, whether the SEBI is asking for it or whether the IITs are asking for it. Where is our you know our governance report card? Right. You know, issues vis-a-vis -vis, promises vis-a-vis. Uh, achievements. So is there a specific thing you would like the government to be accountable for in that context? Is there any point of view that we want specifically on governance or accountability that anyone here feels? Yeah, hello, sir. As, as Mr. Dhut pro, uh, pointed out in the beginning that the uh, uh, accountability factor, it has to be taken care of. Uh, it's the, we, we must remember that the government has been elected for, uh, by the Aam Admi and also by the Young India. So it's not going to be, it's, it's, it will be very unfair if, we, uh, if they pro produce something like the industry friendly budget or for the Aam Admi budget. They should keep, uh, they should keep both the things in place. I just want to know if, the, uh, if India is looking at 10% growth, is it for only the uh, masses or for the classes? I mean, there's a huge distinction between that. There's a, we have probably seven out of the 10, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not sure, uh, seven or five of the top 10 richest men in the world living in India. And also a ch huge chunk of the poverty in India as well. So how does these two fine lines balance? Well, Dr. Saxon, I'm going to start with you. I think there definitely seems to be an aura around the room that when you're looking at this growth in this 10%, it's much more for a very, very small sector of people. It's not necessarily translating itself down. And as he said, is it for the arms or arm, arm janta or is it for the masses or the, or the classes? Well, let me put it across, first of all, about the governance part of it, a question that you asked. And I think this is a time that has come when the government would really need to come out with a report card. It's time that we really make the government start telling us what is it and that you have been doing with, the, with our money. And I would imagine that today the government seems to be far more serious than what it had been earlier, uh, given by, let's say, some of the couple of statements that have been made. When you say serious, means they're open to accountability? They, they're open to accountability. They're talking something which is, which is truly needed. Take an example like in the context of education. I think today is the time when one has to really start changing the entire paradigms in education. Because if you're really talking about, about development, you can't talk about development unless and until you're really providing education to the masses itself. Now, it is over there that one has to really consider that what's really happening at your primary schools. There are, there are areas where there are schools, but there are no teachers. And there are places which is just the other way around. Now, the, it, it isn't just merely the question of an investment that would need to go there, but it is as to how does one really get the most out of that place? And therefore, any kind of a budgetary system would really need to talk something about that part also. No, and I think education is a high priority. Actually, do you want to just talk specifically on this? Definitely. You know, education is one of the key factors. But I think if you